You know, sustainability education programs are not just for the college crowd, as we've seen with spring water, and it's not only about the environment. Although environmental awareness plays a big role, the spiritual well-being of the society as a whole plays a very important part as well. The Waldorf system of private education strives to cultivate a lifelong love of learning and inspires learners' intellectual, emotional, and physical and spiritual capabilities to be individuals certain of their paths and to be service to the world. Cedarwood Elementary in Southwest Portland takes the spotlight for Businesses Month. Let's take a look at how it works. I'm Gordon Westfall and I'm not at Cedarwood. I'm at Apple Blossom Nursery, a little Waldorf school here in Portland, Oregon. It isn't the typical big box uh, school like you would see around the corner. It is a school that maximizes space and time. It's a residence and it's called Apple Blossom Nursery and Carrie Riley is the founder and teacher of this school and we're going to talk to her about how she's grooming her children to be more sustainable stewards of our community. So why don't we go inside and check it out. Apple Blossom Nursery. Let's go check it out. Hi, Carrie. Hi, We're here. here. All right. what the philosophy of Apple Blossom is. We follow Waldorf's philosophies, Rudolf Steiner's, and also really integrate LifeWays, which is a branch of Waldorf education, and it really focuses on the child in a home setting in a day program. Traditional kindergartens in Waldorf are short half a day, and most of the parents who come to me want full day care, and so what's wonderful is that we have a preschool program, but we also offer a full day for these children. So LifeWays has worked very closely with um, inspiring what we bring to the children every day. Dwarf education, boiled up into a nutshell, is educating children through the head, heart, and hands. And it's a delicate balance of bringing children information so they can learn cognitively. But at the same time, Steiner believed that children should also learn through their hands and actions, should be connected also to the heart. And that is something that I have found is not really connected in other educational systems, and that's why I've embraced Waldorf so, so wholeheartedly. Being outside in nature is a huge part of our program. So our children always come in their rain boots and their rain pants and their rain jackets, and no matter what's happening outside, um, the wind, <laughs> we all play outside, whatever's happening, we have to be prepared for the outdoors. With the LifeWays, how is that uh, working with the cultivating sustainable uh, ethics? We're cultivating sustainability by letting children feel free to crawl over the ground, to put things into their mouth, to know that what is going into the mouth is not toxic, that it's actually something natural. Um, collected driftwood, collected river stones. What can you do with these river stones and these rocks? Very open-ended ideas and play things. We also don't use chemicals. When we are cleaning the house, we want to make sure that they can indeed put things in their mouth and not be worried that it's going to be some sort of toxic um, some sort of poison. What's the day in, in the Apple Blossom Lake? Well, first off, there are no shoes allowed in the house, and that's also part of the eco-certification. Uh, when you walk around the neighborhood, even if you wipe off your feet on the carpet before you come in, traces of lead can be found on your shoes. And so we leave all shoes um, in the shoe shop, as we call it. Take off our shoes, we wash our hands, and then they come into the program, and they're welcomed with warm tea. We have herbal tea every morning, and porridge uh, as a breakfast. Most children have already eaten, but sometimes they just want to sit down and relax and not join right in immediately to play. 
So they, it's an organic meal. Of course, yeah. Everything we use is um, organic, whole grain as much as uh -huh. possible. Everybody has um, their hands So af after we've enjoyed our morning tea together, um, the, the children are invited mm -hmm. to come out and come into group play. And after they've enjoyed the group play, we'll come together and have a, a group circle and sing good morning Thanks to the ready. children. Uh, this year we've been lucky to have a, a bilingual teacher, so we sing in Spanish and in English every day for the children. And then after that we um, go into two groups. One group will come outside with the teacher and play and um, do their work. Uh, sorting. The first group is in charge, and it's usually the older group. They're in charge of feeding the animals, making sure that they've got the right bowl for the rabbits, the right bowl for the chickens, what's going to be going into the compost. Um, and, and they get to take that up because that's their responsibility. They also feed the cats and give the chickens the chicken scratch. Now, while we're indoors with the younger group, what we'll be doing is a kitchen activity. We may br be bringing um, vegetables to the table for the children to scrub. We teach them how to chop the vegetables, um, not only scrub them, peeling carrots and peeling potatoes, and just being part of what we're going to be having that day. And another teacher might be working on an ongoing art project. We, we don't do real short-ended art projects. Ours can be pretty open-ended and ongoing. We've been working on one um, from the very beginning of the year, which has been really nice for the children to just check in with that and um, work on their project and then see what's going on in the kitchen. Then as we go into the next part of the day, I understand you incorporate Indigenous American teachings in your curriculum. Yes. Uh, every fall, and this usually goes on all year, but especially in the fall, in our circle time, we do an Indigenous American circle time. And that really coincides with harvest time. We sing songs in uh, native language, um, which is real easy for the children to learn. It, there's a lot of beat that's involved, and children really love anything where we can clap our hands and sing to a beat and they learn the words so quickly. So we sing the songs and we sing it in um, native language, then we'll sing it in English and give them a connection to the earth and the grains and the sun and the rain and things that make the food that we eat and really connect them through song and dance as well to um, our, our, the original peoples, to this land and, and what does that look like. So we have um, two beautiful nature tables that the children every day will bring beautiful treasures from flower petals to nuts depending on the time of year and it's real nice to see and to connect with what's happening outside to what's happening at our nature table and we talk about that too. And we sing uh, the transition song, and that means that the children need to put away their toys and come follow the teacher to wash their hands, use the bathroom. And everything is done ryth very rhythmically, as the seasons are, with the children daily, so that the rhythm is very, very much the same every single day for them. So when they hear that song, they know that it's time to go in and wash their hands. Then we have a washing hands song. And then we have a song that calls them in to the front room for story time. We read books to the children and we do puppet shows because it gives them something to focus their eyes on. But we do very, very simple puppet shows. It's probably not what you may have may think about when you hear a puppet show. It's just a, a, a simple creature that could be carved out of wood. It could be um, a, a rock that looks like a duck that we'll use and, and say it's a duck, but the children can see that it is indeed a duck when you say that this. From work do not budge, your drudge from work do not budge. My cradle hip and daedle, your cradle hip and daedle. My child's wild, your child's wild. My man Sam, your man Sam. I go to town, you go to town. So, so, together we'll go. And those two women walked into town together, both finding a new friend in one another, and they did their shopping. And then they climbed back up and they decided that they would meet each week at the top of the mountain and talk about their lives. And they said goodbye to one another and off they went to their children and waited for another week. 
Stars and moon and sun, now our story starts. And then we have the, we listen sing um, a goodbye to our uh, puppet show and call them in for um, their, their meal. And their meal is there waiting for them. Inside Come to the table and our cook <coughs> is ready to serve the children. And they all sit down and all wait for the fire fairies and we sing the fire fairy song to them. And then they know that, and then a beautiful lunch that our cook has made, um, very seasonal. We, we try to use greens and fruits that are local and seasonal to the children. And the lunchtime consists of a vegetarian meal, organic. And um, I'd say 98% of the children love the food that they get and they try foods like kale and chard and spinach and eat it and like it. And sometimes we disguise it in sauces and they don't know what they're eating, but they love it anyway and, and, and eat it. And uh, there's no complaints there. And after a big day of playing and uh, really balancing out the expansion and contraction and the rhythm, they're ready to eat and sit down and have a good meal. Uh, and when the meal is over again, we say good to the fire fairies and sing it. And the children know this is the end of the meal because it's the end of the meal song. And we say goodnight. Smoke fairies and then after that, um, we there break the children go. up into two groups. And we have There's one group of children that go into a prepared nap room where they will have their rest time. And then we take the other children that are leaving. They're going home for a half day. And um, I'll take those children out to the parents. So Carrie, thank you so much for allowing us to come to the preschool and observe your day and, and uh, the children. And it's been really great. Is there anything else that we could look forward to in the future with you and your school or any expansion or we just expanded into a uh, a program we've added infants to our program in northeast portland in the inner northeast and we now take infants age five months up to age three and it's the first and only eco certified infant program that utilizes uh, both rye and waldorf methods and it's in a wonderful beautiful older home in portland so I welcome you to come visit me out there sometime well thank you so much for thank having you, us it's been a me. real pleasure and a treat and I'm Gordon Westfall, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for visiting. <laughs> One thing I really appreciate about Apple Blossom is that they have animals here with the chickens and the bunnies. And so my children understand that an egg really does come from a chicken because they are out there in the coop and they see where it comes from and they have that connectedness to where their food is coming from. I want one. Don't you want one? We'll probably eat them later. I can't wait to go to school. Then I will be a big kid too. I'll make friends and learn so much at school.